Hey, good morning. How are we today? It is a gross, disgusting day outside, uh, and it looks like it's probably going to rain all day long. I got a an alert from FEMA on my phone that says, hey, good morning, that says there is a flood watch in Wisconsin today. A flood watch in Wisconsin today. So, absolutely gross, disgusting weather. The, hey, good morning, we got one more on. But that doesn't mean we have to just sit around like, as I tell my kids, lumps on a bump. We can choose to get ourselves moving. We can choose to build up those good endorphins. We can choose to overcome that uh, that uh, that mental dreariness. Oh boy, I just saw two people drop off. I hope that's like internet connection issues. Not they're like I'm changing the channel on this guy. No, uh, we can choose to overcome. Hey, you're back. Thanks. We're gonna get moving today. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna overcome the doldrums, and we're gonna get our bodies moving and, and, and help improve our mental states today, right? Yeah. So all strength today, Julie. If you're there, just like I promised yesterday, we do not have a cardio-based workout today. You are very welcome. Uh, and and I, I probably just need this today as well, just to, just to move, just to get my muscles really flexing. Hey, if you sat in on, on my superhero moves workout yesterday uh, and your kiddos were with you, I would love to hear how they enjoyed it. If you go back to that to workout number 26, virtual workout number 26, superhero moves, just drop a comment in. Let me know how you liked that workout. Let me know if your kiddos did it, how they liked that work. Julie, hey, welcome. I am so glad you're here. Uh, let me know how your kiddos liked that workout, if they did that with you. I love to get those comments. I love to get uh, any, any feedback that you've got. Uh, let's, yeah, let, let's get started. Do you have some good music playing? I hope you got some good music playing. You probably can't hear it right now. But I've actually got the disco channel on. I just felt like some 70s disco playing. So I've got the disco music channel playing in the background. And it's on quiet, so you don't have to listen to it. All right. So we're going to get started. As usual, we need no equipment. Now, I've got a bench here. I'm going to be using that bench for one exercise. You can, if you don't have a bench like this, and I'm, I'm guessing you probably don't at home. You can use an ottoman, you can use a chair, you can use the sofa, or as I'll demonstrate once we get to that exercise, you can just put your feet up against the wall and do this exercise up against the wall once we get to that point. But aside from a mat and your customary bottle of water, you don't need anything else for this workout aside from maybe some awesome music so you can tune out the voice of me and, uh, and listen to the, to, the, to the awesome music. So we're going to start right here. Fingertips behind the head. We're going to tuck the elbows through. We've done this exercise before, but we're going to change it up a little bit. As you come up, we're going to reach that elbow. So what we're doing is we're flexing the elbow, extending the elbow to get that elbow warmed up. In addition to getting that upper body and that shoulder Getting to the low back a little bit. Really rotate in and up. We're going to go five more. Five. Reach. Four. Reach. Three. Reach. Not speed through it. Two. And one. Same thing, other side. Tuck the elbow through. Reach up high. Tuck the elbow through, reach up high. If you've done Pilates before, this is kind of like a thread the needle. I don't think they do the whole elbow bend thing in Pilates. You have to ask my wife. And she's not here right now. It's just me and you guys. We're going to try two more here. 
two, and one. That actually feels pretty good on my low back. I'm gonna take this off. I'm already starting to warm up just a little bit. I turned the heat on once I got here. Scapular push-ups for this. I want you on all fours. Elbows are locked down. We've done these before as well. What we're gonna do is we're gonna let the shoulders relax so your torso drops down between your shoulders, push the shoulders back out. Shoulders relax. Imagine drawing those shoulder blades together as you do this. So your shoulder blades almost kind of kind of wrap around your upper back and then your shoulders push out to lift that torso up. Two more, two and one. And then just your standard bridge on the floor, bridge up and down, nice and easy, bridge up and down, bridge up and down. Now, we're gonna revisit this exercise during our workout today. We're doing it as part of the warm-up just to get those glutes firing, to get that low back working a little bit. But we're gonna revisit this exercise during the workout in a little more intense manner, and that's why I've got this bench here. Or, as I mentioned before, two more. You can have an ottoman. You can have a chair there. You can have. You can use the sofa, or you can just put your feet up against the wall. And I, like I said, we're going to demonstrate how to do that once we get to that point. Let's go back to that thread the needle. Fingertips by the ears, reaching through, reaching up, through with elbow bent, up with elbow straight. Going for 10 on each side. Getting that rotation so you can get that torso warmed up a little bit. Don't make yourself dizzy though. Let's try two more here. Two. And one. And then same thing, other side. Elbow through, reach up high. Elbow through, reach up high. You might find now that you're reaching up a little bit higher than you did the first round through these. As your body starts to warm up and loosen up a little bit. Two more here, two, and one, and reach. Scapular push-ups, remember we're gonna let those shoulders relax, the shoulder blades kind of wrap around back and push back out. Elbows stay locked out as you do this. So we're not doing a traditional push-up, we're doing an elbows locked push-up that comes from the shoulders. Three, and two, and one. Back into that bridge. Kind of a brief warm today. Oh, what's that? I'm hearing them say, oh, I already saw the message. Bridge, and down. Really try and push into these. Get those hips extended. Feel those glutes engage. Go through this with a nice, slow range of motion, nice, slow motion. Two more here. Right on. All right, so. A little brief warm up. And we're going to use the wall or some space near a wall for this exercise. If you don't have enough empty space on the wall, you can use like the inside of a door frame for part of this. Um, 
you really only absolutely need the wall for one of these, but one of these exercises is going to be that bridge with your feet up on this bench or out of bed or the chair or the, or the sofa, or I'm going to show you how to do this with your feet on the wall as well. So let me just demonstrate these three exercises before we do this circuit. So we can just do this circuit all the way through without having to pause and explain. So first one, oh boy, cut my head off. First one, you're gonna stand with your shoulder toward the wall. Get it a little bit close. I'm gonna put my outside hand on the wall and walk away from the wall a little bit. And push away and back in. Push away and back in. So this is a sideways push up with my hand against the wall. Put one side and then the other side. Second exercise, we're going to do that bridge. Now, I've got this bench here. If you've got a bench or whatever, some of the other items I mentioned before, feet up on the bench, we're going to bridge up on that bench. However, if you don't have something to put your feet up on, there's your something to put feet up on. Bridge up against the wall and back down. So kids, when your mom comes in and says, why are there footprints on the wall? You can say, I was working out with Roy. I'll take the heat for that. Uh, the third exercise in this set, we're going to sit really tall. So you're going to sit facing the wall as tall as you can keep that posture. We're going to alternate crisscross, crisscross. Keeping that posture nice and tall. It looks like a super simple exercise. I'm warning you, it is not easy. That's a challenging exercise. You're going to feel like you really want to lean back. Keep that posture really tall. Feel that core really engaged to keep your torso more forward rather than leaning back. All right. So we're going to start all three of those exercises in a row, starting with that lateral wall push-up. We're going to go for sets of 12 on this one. So, shoulder in toward the wall, hand to the wall, lean in, push away. Lean in, push away. Now, the farther away from the wall you walk, the tougher this exercise is going to feel, especially on the triceps. Four, and three, and two, and one. That was 12. Switching sides, doing the same thing. Shoulder in toward the wall. Walk out a little bit. You're going to bring it in toward the wall and push yourself away. Bring it in toward the wall, push yourself away. The farther in you walk toward the wall, the tougher these are going to feel. I'm sorry, the farther out the way the one you walk from the wall, the tougher these are going to feel. Yeah, strike that reverse then. Three more. Three. And two. And one. Nice. Second exercise. We're going to use this bench. We're going to do a bridge. Or, like I showed you before, with your feet on the wall, you can do feet on the wall, feet on a chair, ottoman or footstool, what have you. Heels on the bench. Dig down into the bench, not across the bench. You don't want to push the bench away from you. You want to push the bench down into the floor. Lift up and back down. Nice and slow. Feel those heels dig down into the bench. Feel those glutes engage as you lift those hips up high. Controlling in both directions. That upward motion, the concentric motion, and the eccentric motion, that downward motion, that controlled release, both extremely important in any exercise. Two more here. Two. Push those hips up. One. Nice. 
Nice, tall posture, legs straight out in front of you. You're gonna feel through here engaged, you're probably gonna feel those glutes kick in a little bit. We're gonna cross the ankles, figure four, cross over, cross over. I want you to do your best to keep your hands up off the floor and maintain a nice, tall spine with that posture as forward as you can keep it. I'm gonna count to 20. Thirteen, fourteen, keeping that posture upright. Four, three, two, and one. Right on. Feel the quads in that. Feel the abs in that. Feel those glutes. Maybe the back a little bit. Awesome. Take a quick sip of water if you need it. We're gonna go right back up to the top of that set of three exercises. It's not going to be a super long workout today. It's not going to be an hour long Roy Smalley cardio extravaganza special. Just focusing on some simple strength motions today. Into the wall, out and away. The farther away from the wall your feet get, the tougher that's going to feel. Go for 12. Feel those triceps, feel the chest work a little bit, feel the shoulders a little bit, one more here, good, same thing other side, flip it, flip it, and here we go. Four more, going four, and three, and two, and one. Nice. Going into that bridge, feet in the wall, feet in the bench, the chair, the sofa, your kid. Yeah, don't put your, well you could, I suppose. Digging down into that bench, not across it, Push down, lift up, and back down. Down, lift up. Controlling that motion in both directions. Getting those hips extended by using the glutes, not using the low back. When you really push those hips forward into it, you should feel those glutes squeeze. You shouldn't feel that low back strain. Focus on the glutes. Four, three, two, and one. Nice tall posture. Engaged. You might feel some engagement there. You might not feel engagement here. Maybe you do have an engagement here. I don't know. We'll see. Cross. Cross, keeping that posture tall, not supporting with your hands, supporting with your core. If it helps, you can go here. Four more, four, three, Two and one. How you doing? Doing okay? Yeah. All right. Take a quick sip of water. One more time through that circuit, starting with those sideways wall push ups. All right. Ready? Outside hand against the wall. Shoulder in. Push away. (sighs) 
three, and two, and one. Nice. Same thing, other side. Shoulder toward the wall at the bottom, push away. There's a little bit of a rotation there as you push yourself away. Nine, 10, 11, and 12. Keep it up. We only have three surfaces for the exercises today. That's it. And then we stretch. Down into the bench, not across the bench. Lift, not push, lift. Dig down, push up. Now, if you got some weights at home, you can do some weights right here in your hips. Weighted bar, two more here. Dumbbells, last one. Uh, nice tall monster. Legs out in front. Here if you want, here if you want, here if you want, but not here on the floor. So serious tonight. Nice tall spine. Core engaged. Four, three, limiting motion in the upper body. Last one there. All right. Made it through the first circuit. Moving on to two more exercises. For this, all on the mat. That sound, that sound awesome? It could be like nap time, except I'm not gonna let you sleep. I'm gonna keep talking so you stay awake. Hey, we've got four now, welcome. If you're just joining us, if you're coming in a little bit past the beginning of the workout, we've been through a warm up already. Oh, we just lost it before. I'll finish my thought anyway. We, we, we've been through a warm up already. We've been through our first circuit of three exercises. We're heading into our second circuit of three exercises. For this, on hands and knees, I'm going to start right here. I want my hands on the mat. You can have your hands and knees on the mat. That's okay. Plant the toes. What we're going to do is we're going to lift up the knees off the floor just a little bit and march the hands. Hands close together helps out a lot here with your balance. Try and keep those knees right underneath your hips and hovering just a couple inches off the floor. Four, three, two, one. We're going to come back down into this tall seated position. Bring your hand, legs up off the floor, touch hands underneath. Keeping that tall posture just like we did before with that leg cross. Let's do 10 more. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, tall posture, 2, and 1. It's easy to slump over, slouch down in that. Don't fall into that trap. 
I'm going to turn this sideways because I need to look at you people. Lying on your side, either here or here, whichever feels more normal, natural, comfortable for you. Warm than that. Okay. Top leg bent and foot on the floor. Lift that down, that bottom leg up and in. Feel the insides of those thighs saying, what? Working those adductors, controlled in both directions. You might not get a lot of range of motion on this. Do what you can. Three more. Three, two, one. Same thing. Other side. Starting sideline, top leg bent, foot on the floor, lift up. Think about lifting with the arch of your foot. So that arch of your foot lifts up toward the ceiling. Not your toe, more of your heels lifting up toward the ceiling. Three, two, one. Third exercise. Oh, no, that was the third exercise. Back to the beginning. Get a quick sip of water if you need it. We're going to go back into that quadruped, all fours position. Dig down with the toes, hands close together. Knees are hovering and march the hands. Just an inch or two off the floor with the knees, no farther than that, and just a little bit off the floor with the hands. Try to keep the rest of your body as still as possible. Three, two, one. Seated on your mat, feet out in front of you. We're going to lift up, touch underneath. Keeping that posture as tall as you can. No slouchy slouchies. Oh, I saw a comment. I'll read it right after this. Ten, nine, abs and quads, five, four, three, two, one. What's that say? Is there a more challenging way to do this inner thigh exercise? Yes, there actually is. I am so glad you asked me that, Julie, because I'm going to demonstrate that more challenging way for you right now. Now, of course, you can do that exercise with, say, an ankle weight on, and that's going to make it more challenging right off the bat. However, I know that most normal people don't have ankle weights right there at home. So here's what you can do to make that exercise more challenging. Okay, here's one way. Here is the other way. So what I'm doing is when this foot hits the floor, I'm letting my weight rest on it. When I pick that foot off the floor, my weight is on this leg. So my weight is constantly shifting from leg to leg, primarily working that upper ad adductor now. Two and one. So there's your more challenging variation, Julie. You can do that if you've got like a kitchen chair that's got some space underneath or an ottoman that's got a little gap underneath. Even if you don't have a little gap underneath, you can bend that bottom leg and lift that leg. So if you don't have any room to get like a foot underneath here, bend that bottom leg so you're working that top leg. Now, here's the thing. That variation is really tough if you've got a pre-existing knee condition. So if you've got a pre-existing pre knee condition, 
I would recommend shying away from that and doing the sideline one that I showed before. You are welcome, Julie. Let's do the other side. Remember, I'm shifting my weight between that lower leg and that upper leg. So right now, my weight is here to support myself in that side plank. But as I release and lift that lower leg, my weight shifts on that upper leg and then back down to that lower leg. And I'm lifting that foot up off the bench just to emphasize the point. You don't have to do that. You just have to let your weight shift from foot to foot. Three, two, one. Now, one of the benefits of doing it that way is that you also get the shoulder really firing. You get those obliques really firing. So that's really an all over kind of exercise. Whereas the one that's lying on the floor is really just focused on the adductors. Let's go one more time. Those three exercises. Starting in that quadruped position. And Julie, thank you so much for asking me about that more challenging variation. That variation isn't normally something I would have shown just for kind of a, a basic online group exercise class. But since you asked, hands down, toes dug on, lift up. That's something that I would probably normally reserve for a little bit more intermediate or advanced class where I know the people who are involved. But I know you, Julie. I felt confident explaining how to do that. And again, if you've got a pre-existing knee condition, you're probably going to want to shy away from that because it's probably going to make your knee talk to you a little bit in a way you don't like. Four, three, two, one. Seated tall. Lift and touch underneath. Keeping that spine tall, keeping that posture shifted forward, engaging with the abs and the quads. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. That sideline leg raise, however you want to do it. If you want to do it the way I just showed you on the bench, if you want to do it sideline on the floor here, I'm going to do a sideline on the floor, lift up and back down. Now, there is a third way you can do this. You could get a pillow under this hip so that this leg has more range of motion both down and up. That's gonna give you a little additional squeeze in that adductor muscle because that hip's gonna open up a little bit more. The adductor's gonna have more room to travel. Two and one. Same thing, other side. Now, of course, you can just work on developing better range of motion in this version as well. And the higher up you can lift that leg, the more you're going to feel that adductor squeeze the stronger it gets, the harder it's going to be able to work. Four, three, two, one. Now, if you're doing a workout with a partner, so if you've got a buddy there, you could, for example, switch off doing this exercise. One of you does the exercise while the other one applies just a little bit of pressure to that lower leg that you have to fight against. Again, if you've got a pre-existing knee condition, I might shy away from that one. But that would be similar to say, putting an ankle weight on 
allow your partner to just put a little bit of pressure on there that you have to resist against. Not like sitting down on that because that's going to be absolutely killing. You're not even going to be able to move your leg. But just a little gentle pressure down on that foot can make a huge difference in the amount of effort it takes to do that exercise. Okay, so there's circuit number two, three exercises. We got a third circuit to go with three exercises in it. This is gonna be a little bit of a lower body and core focus, like all these exercises happen, really. This first exercise, I want you to imagine ski poles. So you got your ski poles right here. What we're gonna do is we're gonna step back and we're gonna force those ski poles back behind. So we're looking for a, a forceful push back and a hard stop behind. So we're not swinging there and really getting the shoulders open up. We're gonna boom, boom, boom. Like you're almost like you're trying to punch somebody who's standing behind you, okay? As we do that, we're gonna do a little step back, boom, boom, boom. Lean forward into it, hard push back and a hard stop. So I want you to imagine cross-country skiing. Shush, shush, shush. I'm not telling you to be quiet. I'm imitating the sound of cross-country skiing. Come on, give me a little grace here. Shush, shush, shush. And as you do that, I want you to imagine driving back with your elbows. Feel those lats, shoulders engaged, pins forward, Feel those glutes engaged as you do that hinge and come up tall. Four, three, two, one. So you're feeling these muscles here. You're feeling these muscles here. You're feeling through here, maybe a little through here, but I don't want you to feel strain there, just engagement. Second exercise, forward lunges. Just a standard forward lunge. Do what your Range of motion allows you to do. You can't get that knee all the way to the floor. It's okay to do a shorter range of motion. Everybody's working at a different level. Don't feel like you have to work where somebody else is working. The only way you progress, the only way you make genuine improvements is by one, respecting your limitations, and two, gradually pushing past those limitations. Not trying to go all out, all at once. Four, three, two, one. So respect the limits that you've got right now, but don't feel bound by them. You gotta, you gotta start to gradually push past those limits if you wanna see consistent, consistent improvements. Third exercise, Y stance, knee lift, twist. Try to get elbow and knee together. Ten, nine, eight, four, three, two, one. What do you do if, for example, you can't twist that far? Maybe you've got a low back problem. Maybe you've got a spinal fusion. What can you do? There's your alternate. So rather than the twist, just do a lift and a little side back. All right, there's your alternate exercise. Going back to that ski shushers, right? Remember, driving back with the elbows, hard stop. Okay, so you feel those lats really engaged, backs and shoulders really engaged, a little step back, pinch forward. Breathing, super important. If you stop breathing, you'll be the first to know. But seriously, folks, four, three, two, one. 
four, three. Breathing out on the effort phase of an exercise. So when a muscle squeezes, that's when you breathe out. As you're returning, that's when you take that breath in. You don't want to hold your breath, especially if you're doing a heavy weighted exercise. It's commonly referred to as a Valsalva maneuver. Builds up a lot of what's called interabdominal pressure, a lot of pressure in here that makes you feel like you can lift a ton of weight. And maybe temporarily it does help, but it dramatically increases your chances of getting a hernia or another weightlifting type of injury. So you want to avoid holding your breath. Breathe out as you push. Let that breath come back in as you lower. Second exercise, forward lunges. Here we go. Again, working within your tolerable range of motion today, maybe pushing just a little bit past that comfort zone. Wherever you want to go with your hands is just fine. This is just what kind of where I do, where I default to. Run four more, four, three, two, one. Remember the variation I showed you? If you need to do that variation, if you have trouble doing a twist, do that variation. If you can go here, great. Think about those abs and those steps. Engage, engage, engage. Keep those feet wide apart. 10, 9, 8. Four, three, two, one. Quick sip of water, coming back to the top of that in just a moment. All right, starting with your ski shushers. Hard stop and back, drive those elbows back, feel those lats kick in, feel that upper back kick in. A short step back and hinge. Pushing off with those ski poles. Pushing off those skis with the feet. Feel the boots engaged. Lats, upper back. Four, three, two, one. I kind of feel like a chicken pecking on that one. Don't you? That thought just occurred to me. All right. Lunges, alternating. Here we go. Think about what foot you always start on with lunges. Why do you start on that foot? Is it because you feel like a better leg is stronger? Is it because you feel like that leg has better balance? Here's a secret most people don't realize. The majority of people start an exercise like this by stepping forward their left foot, regardless of whether or not they're right-handed or left-handed. Four more. Four, three. If you got dumbbells, you can pull dumbbells on this. There you go. Wide stance, twists, or your variation. I showed you your variation already. Ready? Here we go. That's our 
That's our strong point for today. That is it. Let's stretch off a little bit. I feel like laying down on the mat. How about you? Look at that, the quad stretch. We've done this before. If you haven't, I'm reaching with my left hand toward my right leg. My right side is down on the floor, so that lower leg is my right leg. I'm pulling the heel back up toward my butt to stretch out my quads. The closer you can get to your butt. How's everybody feeling? Feel good? That wasn't a super intense workout today, and that's on purpose. We're going to hold just a bit longer. There wasn't a whole lot of upper body in that. There was some upper body, but this was very much core and lower body focus. Also on purpose. Can you believe this is number 27? 27? Who's been to every single one so far? Anyone? I have. All right, those adductors we worked, those two variations, well, kind of several variations I discussed, the two variations I showed you. Let's get those stretched out, butterfly stretch, nice tall posture. We're not slouching down in this. We're trying to get tall so you can stretch those adductors. If you can't reach your toes, go to your ankles. That's the next best thing. You can't hold on to your toes, great, do it. Just maybe five more seconds. And then we're going to go into child's pose. Now, there was that variation of child's pose that we've done before, and I'm going to turn the map so you can see a little bit more clearly, that we've done before, where once you get in child's pose, watch what I'm doing. Once you get down in child's pose, we're going to walk the hands just a, one and a, a step and a half or two steps to one side, and feel that stretch down the lat, down the side. Maybe a little bit in the shoulders. We've got tight shoulders. But just a couple little steps to the side. All right, now step to the other side. On all fours, lift that back up like a cat. Get hollow underneath. Relax that back down. 
opposite direction. We're going to arch that back down. And hold, hold. Hey, how you doing? Good morning. See, we still got three hanging out with us. That's awesome. Let's come up into a standing position and just ragdoll down. Get the backs of those hamstrings, get that low back a little bit. Check and see whether your shoes are still tied properly. All right, and roll it up nice and easy. One vertebra at a time, thank you. All right. Thank you all for joining me today. I hope that was a great workout for you. I hope that uh, the, the rainy, blah weather today doesn't get you down too much. Try and, try and keep your mind busy. Do something fun. Have a cup of hot chocolate. Have a great day. If you want more information about what classes we've got coming up, thanks, Julie, uh, and uh, maybe what other services we provide, feel free to visit my website at roysmalley.us or visit our uh, combined website at centercircle.info. I uh, hope you have a great day and we'll see you tomorrow virtually.